A fundamental part of your feasibility study is to demonstrate that the Irfan Valley is able to provide sufficient water to meet the demand for the new town. And in order to do that, you're going to have to do some hydrological analyses. So why are hydrological analyses needed? Well, they're needed to help us to answer some key questions. First of all, we need to figure out what the anticipated water demand is. You'll notice if you've looked at the Spark task on Blackboard that I've already given you some guidance on what you have to do here. So the water demand is based on the number of people in the proposed new town, their per capita consumption of water, a certain amount of water that has to remain flowing in the river, even if you're going to be abstracting water from it for another purpose. So that water is there to provide environmental flows to maintain uh, downstream services for other river users and also for the ecology. So the second question is, is there enough river flow to meet the demand, maintaining the flow in the river and abstracting water for the town? And to do that, we're going to have to create a synthetic river flow record for your particular dam site. And we do that by using a downstream river flow gauge and applying a factor to that to create us a synthetic river flow record. Once we've done that, we need to determine if we need a dam and therefore a reservoir in order to meet the demand. And there are some subtleties there, uh, but we do that by a simple analysis of the river flow record. And I'll demonstrate that to you in a few moments. Fourth, we then need to decide where the dam and reservoir would be. And that's uh, a question of iterating around different sites uh, and then checking at each site that there would be sufficient river flow to meet that demand. And then once you're looking at a particular site, you need to decide what size of dam is required. Because at a particular site, uh, the height of the dam will determine how much water you can store behind it. And the amount of water that you can store behind it for a particular height of dam is defined by the topography of the landscape behind that dam. So you're going to have to do some topographic analysis uh, for different dam heights in order to figure out how the uh, stored water volume will change for every metre of dam that you build. So what analysis do you need to do? Well, first of all, you need to start by estimating the water demand. And this is what you were doing in the Spark task. So make sure that you've completed that. Once you've estimated the water demand, that will be the same for all of your different uh, sites. Following that, you need to do a set of preliminary analyses. So you need to choose a dam site option somewhere along the river uh, between Aberguessin and just upstream of landworted wells. Then you need to estimate the catchment water yield. And you need to do that by generating the synthetic hydrograph for your particular dam site. And you need to do that by calculating the catchment area upstream of your dam site, and then applying the ratio of the silmary catchment area to your estimated catchment area and multiplying that by the flow record. Then you'll be able to assess whether your catchment water yield is greater than or equal to the estimated water demand. If it's not, then you need to go and choose a different dam site option. However, if it is, you then need to go on and do a more detailed analysis. So the first step of this is to estimate the reservoir storage that is going to be needed. And we specified that the reservoir storage has to have a 1% chance of failing in any given year. So therefore, we need to do some kind of return period analysis with a 100 year return period as our design criteria, such that we expect our reservoir to be able to provide the water for the town and to maintain the river flows with only a 1% chance of that not happening in any given year. Once you've obtained the approximate storage volume, that's required to meet that criterion, you will then need to use that to estimate the dam height required at the particular site in order to provide this estimated storage. Then you'll need to do a set of analysis to determine whether it's feasible to build a dam at that site. And by this, 
I mean, you'll have to go through and look at the geology, the geotechnics and the other aspects in order to decide whether it would be possible to build a dam in that location. If it's not, then you need to go and look at a different option. If it is, well, this is great news. Uh, and then you can move on. And if you need to look at more options, you need to start again and choose a different dam site and another option. If you've looked at all the options that you need to look at, then at that point, you stop and focus on getting more details on the options that you've provided. How do we determine that there is sufficient river flow at the site to support a proposed abstraction? Well, here's a basic time series of runoff volume, and this is plotted for a period of months. So the basic idea is that in order to provide a water supply from this river, we need to make sure that the estimated demand is less than the average flow that runs down the river. So if we consider these three demand scenarios, demand A, B and C, you can see that demand A is high and it's above the mean flow in the river. So this means that the demand is higher than the supply, so the site is unsuitable to provide water to the level of demand that we've estimated. Demand B is lower than the supply overall, so the site is suitable and it will need a storage reservoir. And the reason it will need a storage reservoir is because the flow sometimes is less than the average demand. And so therefore we'll need some additional storage to balance these times when there is less water flowing down the river than is being demanded by the compensation requirements and the supply to the town. And for demand C, the demand is lower than the supply again, so the site is suitable. But again, there are some periods when the flow dips below that demand, and so therefore we'll need some storage capacity. But as you should be able to see, the amount of storage is going to be less than the demand scenario B. So to summarise, demand A is above the mean flow in the river, so this is not a suitable site. But for demands B and C, the site is suitable, but in the case of demand B, they would need to be a larger storage reservoir than for the scenario of demand C. So in order to do this analysis for your individual dam site options, we need to be able to do our preliminary assessment at each of those sites. So what do you have to do? Well, first of all, you've got to identify the location of your dam site option. You need to then draw the catchment boundary of the catchment that contributes water to the river at that point. You then need to estimate the enclosed catchment area. Now you can do that by counting squares, or you can use the PowerPoint template that I've uploaded and the accompanying video to show you how to do that by drawing shapes on the PowerPoint slide to calculate the area. Then you need to use this to create a modified river flow record. So this would be a synthetic flow record specific to your dam site. Once you've done that, you will be able to compare the mean flow of your synthetic record with the estimated demand to determine whether it would be feasible to supply the water from a dam at that location. So how do you go about creating this modified river flow record? Well, in order to do that, we've provided you with some hydrological data from the Silmary catchment, which is the Irfon's wider catchment area. So this is on Blackboard. And the area of the Silmary catchment is 244.2 square kilometres. And this is shown in the uh, map uh, on, on the screen. So the way that we generate the synthetic monthly flow record for uh, any given site along the River Irfan is that you need to estimate the area of the catchment that serves your particular uh, point on the river. And then you can modify the Silmary catchment flow record by multiplying it by the ratio of the area of your dam site option to the area of the Silmary catchment as a whole. Now this does assume that the relative contribution of water from all unit areas of the catchment is the same. Uh, this might not be true, but it's a reasonable assumption 
in order to generate your synthetic flow record. So you now have the key steps that you need in order to do your preliminary analysis. That is, you know how to estimate the demand from the proposed development and also to include in that the necessary compensation flows that are required to maintain flows in the river. You then know how to estimate the synthetic flow record for a particular dam site along the Earthon Valley based on the summary catchment data. You know how to estimate your areas and you know how to derive that record. So you should be able to start to undertake your preliminary analyses for any given um, dam site option in the Earthon Valley. The techniques that you will need to use to do the more detailed design will be the subject of the next video.